Good morning and welcome back to Elmas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. It's a truncated week for us here in India. Today is the last working day ahead of the long weekend and the ongoing theme in the market remains the repricing of rate cut expectations. We had a few more data points yesterday to keep things interesting and that were the PMIs and they reflect how the businesses think the economy is doing real time. Apart from that, there was also the Bank of Canada rate decision and as expected, they did not raise rates. Good morning, JK. I'm sure you have lots to cover. Uh, your read on PMIs, is there a particular theme you are catching on to? Yeah, good morning, uh, Swaraj. Yes, I think PMI numbers were uh, good uh, on the most part. And uh, the you know heartening thing is that uh, the manufacturing has uh, shown an improvement in Eurozone, uh, UK, as well as in the US. So for months, we have been seeing manufacturing you know, uh, still in a big downturn and uh, services holding it up. But uh, though it still remains in the contraction territory, the uh, uh, you, the number has actually improved uh, on a month-on-month -month basis. And uh, that's a good sign for uh, the global economy. And this actually uh, also boosted uh, the sentiment in the stock market, which was already upbeat, uh, taking cues from the Chinese uh, big policy move of cutting the reserve rate uh, requirement by 1%, uh, percent, releasing as much as 1 trillion yuan uh, liquidity into the system. Uh, of course, uh, this was a measure that was uh, mostly expected uh, because the Chinese authorities had become extremely anxious on the way their market was moving down, hitting multi-year low. And uh, this, this obviously provided the boost to uh, the uh, global markets as well. And uh, in fact, uh, it actually boosted the Indian stocks also, which were uh, trying to recover. And, you know, they ended uh, somewhat better than what it looked in the beginning of the day. Yes, but if you look at overall market, S&P uh, 500 made fourth consecutive all-time high yesterday. And uh, uh, what the market is looking at now is actually the magnificent seven uh, that, the, you know, the Bank of America uh, analyst has coined for the uh, companies of Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Google, Amazon, and uh, you know N N Nvidia uh, and Tesla also. And uh, and one more index that they are looking at is the Philadelphia uh, Semiconductor Index. So these are actually been uh, you know the main focus, and Philadelphia Index has actually risen twenty percent from the lows that it was seen on November and. We all know that it is, a, uh, it is a technology sector that has been driving the market in the US in the last few weeks. Yesterday, of course, then, uh, Netflix, uh, uh, very good numbers uh, and the stock rising 12% gave a boost. But the economic data also uh, was uh, a boost to the market initially, but then later on, uh, you know, they scaled back on the gains because uh, it also meant that the Fed will be uh, less uh, keen to cut rate early uh, as the economy continues to do well. Uh, the global index uh, of uh, you know 47 countries indices rose 0.58%. Interestingly, uh, the European markets uh, rose uh, more than 1.5%. And uh, you know that took cue from another uh, tech company, in, in, you know, a Dutch tech company, ASML, uh, that makes uh, machinery required for manufacturing of adverse chips and they reported 30% rise in revenue. So uh, why I'm focusing on the stock market is because the rest of the markets are actually being in a very narrow range bond market after having uh, bounced from the low yields that we saw in December. It is stalling, waiting for Fed decision. Currency market, US dollar is moving up and down within a narrow range. Yesterday, it, uh, uh, you know, weekend after a PMI numbers from uh, UK and uh, Europe, and uh, even started on a weaker note, even in the US. But uh, when the US PMI numbers came, uh, again, dollar uh, gained back. And uh, so uh, it's not a settled view as far as the bond market and the stock market uh, and the currency market is concerned as of now. But everything waits for the Fed decision. Before that, we have GDP number today expected at 2% uh, of the 4.9% number for Q3 and PC core inflation, which is expected to rise slightly on a month-on-month -month basis. And of course, this is a big influencer as far as Fed decision is concerned. Therefore, uh, the currencies are uh, ranging, but my bias still remains for dollar to gain uh, in a, more in a correction uh, because the yields are bottoming out. And if anything, uh, uh, even a 
a bit more hawkish statement or even a neutral statement from Fed, not hinting at an early rate cut would be enough for uh, yields to rise, which is already well supported because of the huge assurances that is coming for the new year from the uh, US Treasury. Uh, yeah, uh, so we saw Euro moving up and uh, above and again below uh, 1.09, a uh, kind of, you know, central point for the Euro. UK pound has been a much better currency, uh, uh, you know, because their numbers were far better than all uh, other PMIs and, you know, both manufacturing and services uh, influencing. The, of course, the uh, market is also concerned whether uh, UK will cut rate as early as uh, being expected uh, earlier. So uh, monetary policy is, of course, uh, the big thing that we are focusing on. ECB meets today, no uh, change expected. Hence, again, forward guidance uh, from them will be uh, very important. The PMI survey showed that the selling prices had uh, leaped uh, in the last survey, which uh, also worries uh, Europe uh, from taking an early uh, action to cut rates. Uh, when the Bank of Canada held their rate uh, steady at 5% yesterday. Once again, their outlook was uh, somewhat uh, on a cautious note, both on the growth as well as the monetary policy. And uh, they were saying that it is too early to discuss about uh, rate cuts. So markets are in for a disappointment as far as the monetary policy moves, or rather monetary uh, policy rate cuts are concern and that is what will uh, eventually drive the currencies uh, uh, and the uh, stock market as well as the bonds. So uh, th that that is what we are ahead to watch in the next one week, um, uh, you know, starting with um, ECB today, followed by Fed on January 31st and then the Bank of England on uh, February 1st. Uh, uh, so in the meantime, uh, the Chinese move, of course, has been very big, uh, but I don't know whether market will be satisfied with it. They are looking for more from the uh, Chinese uh, authorities. Uh, although markets, uh, the Chinese markets have recovered nearly 5% from the lows seen this month, uh, I think uh, the uh, rally is unlikely to sustain for too long because uh, the problems uh, in the Chinese economy is not just a stock market, but there are some structural issues which need to be addressed. Uh, uh, so that is, so I think it's a long time before investors get back their confidence. That is also shown in the Chinese one, which has not made much gains. Uh, it, it did uh, drop to 7.14. Uh, from uh, you know 7.19 uh, uh, levels that was seen just two days back, but uh, it was not built on its gain. So the, I think uh, we, we need to look for more measures from Chinese authorities before we have uh, you know a sustainable recovery uh, in the markets. As far as India is concerned, uh, you know uh, for the first time, India also saw a release of. Uh, the flash PMI surveys. So the flash PMI surveys come one be one week before the actual numbers are uh, released by the SNB. The flash surveys in India showed an increase in both manufacturing and services PMI, and that was uh, both of them were an improvement over last month as well as over expectations. And once again, India is establishing itself as uh, you know you know uh, constantly. Uh, expanding uh, activity level on the business, both manufacturing and uh, services. And they, that really should be a heartening factor uh, for our stock market, which has been recently struggling uh, to hold on to the uh, you know peaks. And uh, so, yeah, of course, the correction in the stock market in India is a very healthy uh, development. And that, that should really uh, take out the week longs and uh, uh, put uh, markets on a sustainable path. Rupee, uh, again, uh, no, uh, nothing much to talk about. It was held in a 5% uh, range interest from both importers and exporters, very strong uh, below uh, 83, uh, you know, below 83.10 as well as uh, above 83.15 respectively. So that, uh, that state of affairs should continue even as we head into a very long weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. And uh, just to quickly summarize, and one interesting point would also be to note that uh, the manufacturing PMI uh, for all major economies have come out uh, as an improvement compared to the previous uh, months. Uh, we had been seeing some months where manufacturing was uh, struggling, but now it seems things somewhat are improving. So US, UK and Eurozone, all three major economies published. Uh, positive manufacturing numbers. Uh, other development is from China. China cut its reserve requirement by 1%. Uh, that will release approximately 1 trillion yuan into the system. And of course, it provided a boost uh, to the global markets. Uh, in the equity side, S&P 500 continued to make uh, fresh all-time highs. And uh, of course, that's something uh, we'll keep tracking equity side of uh, things. Um, 
and of course the key things to look forward to today would be us gdp number pc core inflation these are the data points that will be released today and of course ecb meeting is the key event uh, which uh, markets will focus on today uh, for rupee we also had uh, the release of flash pmi surveys for india which were very robust uh, increase on a month on month basis for both manufacturing and services um, so th these were really positive numbers and for rupee we continue to trade in a narrow range uh, that's it from us today. Have a very good long weekend, everyone. Uh, tune in on Monday for the latest in the financial markets.